or anything? Oh well. <laughs> oh well, oh well. Anyway, um, fresh pair. Just built. Ten ends. The one on the right is going up to San Jose to Eric. And the one on the left is going to one of our favorite Hollywood actors and uh, guitarist in an upcoming band in L.A. And um, each are getting a cabinet with it. I want to I want to go over quickly. Um, if you're watching this video, you already know about the amps because this is for people that already got one and it's on the way or whatever or, or are getting one. So I don't want to get into all the technicalities of the amp. Just how to you know set it up and unpack it when you get it. Cabinet straightforward. Cut the top of the box open. Take it out. Plug the cable I supply with you and and plug it in and play it. Now I break them in a lot. Okay, I can't sit here for three months playing through it for you, but I, I do an electronic break-in. I break in all the wires and the cable, the wires inside and the wire that I supply the cable to plug into the amp. Um, but it needs more, okay? They need a little more, obviously. So the best way to do that is set the amps on about 9 o'clock um, and plug your bass in. Shut your Game Master off, nice clean sound, and, and practice bass. Uh, do that for a half hour, about three or four times over a few weeks or however, you know, play bass for a couple hours if you want, then it's really broken in. But um, you'll hear them getting sweeter and sweeter, the cab, as you go. But I mean, the speakers are so stiff at first, you know, they really need a lot of break in. But I can only do so much, you know, because I mean, I can't sit here and play through them, you know, for, for months. But they, they're really, they're really ready to go. And um, you'll find I put a tie wrap on one end of the, the barrel end of the cable and uh, put that on the speaker end, okay? Uh, or if you start with it the other way, leave it the other way. It doesn't matter, but I know a lot of guys don't understand this, but cables, like, you know, like this, this cable here is 35 years old, and, I, and I, I watch it like a hawk, like if I bring it anywhere and it comes up missing, now I gotta break in another one. This cable's 30 years of breaking in in the same direction. The electrons move through the cable and all the, all the little you know, I don't want to get into the exacts of what you call them, but they're all charged negative and positive, and, and they, they, they flip around, and they all start facing the same way, and the cable sounds better and better. Um, and, and, and that's why people break in cables. It's not a myth. It really does work. But So anyway, just keep the cable the same way on the back. What you do with your front cables is, is all your business, but a lot of guys ask me, and I always suggest George L's with the nickel ends. They sound the best to me. Um, so that's it for the speaker cabinet, and uh, so the amp is in a double box. You get the, it's a big long box, 40 inches long. The gain master's in there with it. Cut one end of the box off, open and pull the stuff out. Obviously, unpack your gain master, set it down. Um, unpack the head, cut that box open. Unpack the head. On the back of the head, you're gonna find you're gonna find a bag in inside the packing with. Stuff like your power cable and your speaker cable and, and, and these little foam pads that I use. You um, can use them or not, but the amp's pretty powerful. It'll vibrate off the cabinet. But on the back of the head, you're going to find this gold tube guard screwed in, but no power tubes in. All your preamp tubes are installed. I find they travel good that way, so you don't have to deal with them. Okay, The power tubes are usually packed inside the corner of the, of the head box in bubble wrap. Cut them open. Carefully plug you after you unscrew this carefully pack, pack, uh, plug your power tubes in and um, you know you read over and over about how to plug power tubes in if you already know then I'm wasting your time but this is for the guys that don't really know and I hope there's not many of them but you know you can when it says only hold them by the base that's going to be hard to do because you know tubes especially my sockets I like them good and tight and I don't want them loose so, you know, you get it most of the way in, and you may have to push on the top of the glass a little bit, but don't wiggle the top of the glass, and don't grab it by the, the whole glass. Just, just make sure they're seated, that's all. It's that simple. Four tubes, doesn't matter what direction they go in. It's a single-ended amp. Um, uh, so, and then screw the guard back in, and the guard you'll find on the inside has your name engraved in it, my signature, and the serial number, and that's kind of the lineage. My signature's on every part of the amp, and the serial number's in other parts of the amp, too. Um, but that's it for that. Um, now when you look at the front panel of the amp, you will see the jack, obviously, the input, okay? And then that's your volume control, that's your EQ switch, 
and that's your tone control. All right? I don't engrave anything here. It's, it'd be like, where's the gas pedal? Where's the brake? It's pretty simple. You know, volume and tone. Okay? So, you know, start around 9 o'clock like that. That's very powerful, especially with the Game Master on. That's, that's a quite powerful sound. Um, with the Game Master off, you know, it's just a nice, full body, clean sound. <laughs> to the amp, mess with your EQ switch, you know, then you could start bringing the high end up or whatever and get used to that. Um, when what you if someone turns it all the way up? <laughs> There's no need to do that. I've never seen it turned up. No need to do that. There but anyway, now when you start bringing the Gain Master into it, okay, when you get your Gain Master, you're going to see on the bottom of it that I have these mounting tabs, okay? You can unscrew these screws and put them wherever you want. You can put one here and one here, or one here and one here, however you want to do it. This is your friend, okay? This is what gives you all the sounds at different volumes. And this is your effects loop, okay? That's the best part of this, and it's where it's supposed to be, out with your pedals. So, delays, reverbs, any time-based effects, output, they go after this. Before this, chorus, um, phasers, flangers, any of that kind of stuff goes before this. Drive boxes, fuzz boxes, wah pedals, all before this. Time delays after this. Okay? So, and, and, and I give you a way to hook it to your board. And I don't know if I'd Velcro it. it it's pretty heavy, you know. But when, when you start with your Gain Master, there's no tube in this one, but just so you can see, this is your um, level control. Okay? Right there. One, two o'clock. 1.30, 2 o'clock-ish, depending on the tube that's in it, is going to be neutral to the incoming signal when this is off, okay? Gain control, right about here is where I had that set when I was playing, 11 o'clock. Right, that's not a, it's 10 o'clock, whatever, 10, yeah, 11 be more like this. Okay, so 10 o'clock or so, that's, that's just an overdriven amp sound like I had going there. It's not like a searing drive. You want to bring that thing up around here, or so you, you get, you know, a, a boatload of, of gain there. Um, I can give you an example of that right now in a second. So wh where, where I have that set now is, um, I'll roll my tone back a bit. Okay, no gain master. Um, let me shut my volume down. Okay. And, and this is going to be the gain master set you know, at, the, at just the crank amp setting, okay? Now, if I want to bring that up, and this is loud now, okay, with these volumes, I'm using two amps, really, you're only going to have one, so it's twice as loud, but with these volumes here, this amp's pretty powerful. Okay, so um, if I were to, to run this up to here now, I mean, start messing with this amp. One of the most beautiful things about this amp is 
you know, if you put your tone controls about right there, so they're up just a little bit, shut your volumes off, all right? Yeah, that gain master's the back on. Off. Yeah, the volume's off, so a little bit's going to come through, obviously, but now just bring them on until there's sound. Actually, the whole time we only had this one amp on. <laughs> I, I have this amp off on my board. So, that, that guys, that was only one amp, all right? That was only this amp through this cab. Because <laughs> as I'm turning this up, you could see it's not changing anything. And then I just looked over on my board, and only one light is showing on my switch box. But, so anyway, back to the discussion. That's at a flashlight volume. That's like ultra, ultra low, and that's the beauty. And that was with the gain set at the high setting, which I very rarely... So that's the bedroom amp setting? Yeah, I very rarely run the gain on my gain master past that early setting of 10 o'clock, because I get, I get this there, I get... I can live on that. But, you know, I mean, you could play these amps literally like this at a flashlight volume. But that, that'll get you started. That's um, um, a little rundown. And remember, we, were, we weren't in stereo. I'm sorry about... Just plugging in the speakers. The, the, the misleading... Uh, Thing all, the whole time only this amp was on. I didn't realize it, and that's how two of them is is incredible. I mean, it's just insane. Oh, the speakers. Yes, very important. Thank you, Michelle, for reminding me not to be stupid. Okay, very important. This is just a blank chassis that where I start with building these. Okay, I drill these out and then start loading all the parts on and wiring and wiring and wiring and breathing solder on the back. On the right side, as you're facing it, you don't have to get that close. There's going to be three jacks, speaker jacks, speaker outs, okay? This one's going to be labeled 16 ohms right here. These two are going to say 8 ohms, okay? I do not put switches back here. I don't, I, I think that is just ridiculous. I've been working on amps my whole life. The marshals with that little thing that falls out and the switches break. If that switch fails, bye-bye to the output transformer, okay? Because you, you'll be sitting there, you know you don't plug a tube amp in without a speaker plugged in. So. I don't put switches there. So here's how this works. You have a single 16 ohm cab, say the, like the one you got from me or a 412 Marshall or whatever, you plug it into the 16 ohm jack, okay? If you have a single 8 ohm cab, you plug it into either one of these two 8 ohm jacks, all right? If you have two 16 ohm cabs, plug them both into these 8 ohm jacks for a total load of 8 ohms, because when you parallel two 16 ohm cabs, they become 8 ohms. So two 16s here and here, a single 16 here, a single 8 here or here, okay? If you want to use two 8s, you're going to have to make a series box. I can draw you a diagram or make you one or whatever. So you can put those two 8, eight, eight ohm cabs in series and out here. Now, now, don't forget, I supply you a speaker cable, and it's a special cable, okay? I make it up myself. Let me see if I can get my hands on one back here. This is what you're going to get, a, a five-foot cable comes with the amp, okay? It's usually long enough to do just about anything here, all right? And this wire is all broken in. I even break this wire in for you, right? And on one end, you'll find, um, this piece of wire doesn't have it yet, but you'll find a, a tie wrap tied and cut on one end. I'll uh, put that in the speaker when you get the amp. The earlier amps, I wasn't putting that, I just started putting this on about a week or so ago. Um, I just figured everybody knows this, but now I'm realizing people really don't know this, but it doesn't matter which way you use it first, but leave it that same way all the time. Like, if you get it from me and it's got a marking on one end, put that either in the speaker or the head and then just keep it that way. Like, every time you plug it in, plug it in that way. Um, if, if you got one from me a few weeks ago, it won't have any markings on it. Put a tie wrap around one end or nail polish or something and start using it the same way the way you've had it plugged in more than likely you know and remember which end you mark either the cabinet end or that end 
because cables really do um, get directional over time. And uh, so that's your speaker cable. Now, so, okay, well, if you have two cabs or whatever, uh, just call me and order another cable. I'll, 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 I, I, I can make you a cable at just about any length. What comes with the amp is a five-footer. It handles just about anything, really. Um, and then if you need additional cables, um, you can get them from me because you'll, you're not going to find anything that sounds this good. These cables really sound good. So that's it. That's just an overview to get you going. I'm not going to show the goofy video where the guy unpacks the box and starts pulling the stuff up. <laughs> but you could, uh, you're going to get that anyway. When you get it, you'll be the one to see the, the box unpacking. And there's nothing fun about that. The fun part is what I just showed you, sitting down playing the amp. So anyway, let's not get this video too, too much longer than it is. That's good. Peace out.